Good morning, everyone. And again, a warm welcome to all the visitors in our church. Becoming a new creation in Christ. What does this mean? St. Paul, in one of the most beautiful passages in Holy Scripture, says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Think about that. All things have become new. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. To become a new creation means to become something that we weren't before. We're something new, something better than before. It is fulfilling the potential that God has placed inside each one of us. This new life in Christ, becoming a new creation, is central to the Christian life. Our Creator created each one of us in this church in His image and likeness. And this means each one of us has infinite potential. We have infinite potential. But it also means we each have freedom. Freedom to choose whether we want to fulfill that potential that God has given us, or if we want to choose to live in a much smaller way than we can. I recently read a story about a man back around World War II who was a great example of a new life in Christ. This man's name was Frank. And Frank was born out of wedlock, so born out of wedlock at a time when it was shameful. He was a wild teen who had become the leader of a gang. And his gang were all together in fights with other gangs. He slept around with girls. He even got one girl pregnant. And eventually, he left town. He left and left a terrible reputation behind. But when he left town, in his journey of life somewhere along the way, he came to a new life in Christ. He had been a Christian. He had gone to church when he was younger. But somewhere in his journeys, he encountered the living God. And his life changed. And he embraced this new identity in Christ. And he allowed Jesus Christ to enter every part of his life and change it. He became a new person. And when he came back to the town where he was from, no one recognized his behavior. He began paying child support, taking responsibility for the child he had. He tried to reconcile with those with whom he had done bad things for. He eventually got married, lived a Christ-centered life, raised a Christian family, was involved in his church. He had become a new creation. His whole life was changed. Later on in his life, he wrote a letter to one of his God children. And this is what he wrote in his letter. He said, I can say from my own experience how painful life often is when we live without Christ or when we live a halfway Christian life. A halfway Christian life. It's more like vegetating than living. A halfway Christian life is calling yourself a Christian but not allowing Christ to, to rule in your heart and to control every aspect of your life. Living a halfway Christian life is like many people in the church. We come to church, we think we're Christian, but we don't allow what we hear in church, we don't allow Christ to enter our lives and to change our life in every sphere. This halfway Christian life is what we could describe the older son in the gospel reading we heard earlier today. It's got the parable of the prodigal son. I told the children part of the, the, the parable. The father who had two sons, the younger son screwed up, ran away, wasted his, his father's inheritance. The father still received him back in love. But I want to focus on the older son. What happened when the younger son came back? 
The older son, who had always been with the father, couldn't receive his brother back. He was jealous. He was angry. He was frustrated. He said, this is not fair. My younger brother deserves some type of punishment for his bad behavior. Look at me. I've always stayed with the father. I've always done the work that he's asked me to do. I've been the dutiful son. But the problem with the older son is he was a halfway Christian because he was with the father but had not become like the father. Let me say that again because this is a very important point. The older son was living with the father but he had not become like the father. I think that can describe many people in our society today who call themselves Christian, so they are with the Father. They may even come to church regularly. They are with the Father, but they have not opened up their hearts to become like the Father, to realize that in everything we do in life, if we are a follower of Jesus Christ, we're called to imitate Christ. Not only when we're with our Christian friends, we're called to imitate Christ when we're at work, doing an honest, faithful, hardworking work. We're called to imitate Christ when we're with our family, the way we treat our spouses, the way we treat our children, the way we treat our parents as they get older. We are called to imitate Christ when we want to go have fun, go out with the boys and get a beer. There's nothing wrong with going out and getting a beer as long as we are remembering Jesus Christ and imitating him in all that we do. We cannot experience the new life in Christ if we are a halfway Christian, if we give him part of our time, part of our life. When St. Paul talks about being a new creation in Christ, he's precisely talking about the person who's giving over their life to Christ and then discovering the great potential that Christ has placed within them, fulfilling that potential and becoming an icon of Christ in the world today, being a new creation in Christ. Let us all think about that today and ask ourselves, have I truly become a new creation? What part of my life have I not given over to Christ? What part of my life have I not let Christ rule and guide me. If I'm not imitating Christ in every sphere, maybe I'm a halfway Christian. It's not easy to live in Christ. That means we have to crucify our ego, our egocentric ways, our own desires. And it means we have to place Christ first. But if we do that, then we will discover what the new life in Christ is all about. Then we will discover the abundant and rich life that Christ wants for each one of us. Old things have passed away. New things have come. Christ has promised us a new life in him. Amen.